Hello everybody, so in this video we're going to look at the direction cosines of a 3D direction vector. So we're going to start by proving these direction cosines cos alpha, cos beta and cos gamma. And then we're going to use these direction cosines to prove this formula, where L is cos alpha, N is cos beta and N is cos gamma. Okay, so we'll start with a definition of the cosine of an angle. In this case, we know cos alpha will be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So if we have this vector, vector v, and this passes through the x-axis, then we can find cos alpha, which is this, which is this angle here. We can see that the adjacent side will be from the origin to the i component of a vector and this is our right angle and the magnitude of our vector is the hypotenuse so the x component will call x1 and the hypotenuse will call the magnitude of v so in this case cos alpha which is equal to l is the adjacent x1 over the magnitude of v okay so now we can look at cos beta. Well, cos beta will be the adjacent, which in this case is along the y-axis. The right angle will be this line here, and the hypotenuse will again be the magnitude of that vector. So the cos of beta will be the adjacent y1, again, of the magnitude of a vector. And looking at cos of gamma, well the adjacent will now be along the z axis, we'll have our right angle coming to our vector. So here's our right angle, and the hypotenuse again will be the magnitude of a vector. So in this case, cos of gamma will be z1 over magnitude of v and defining these in terms of l and n well l will be x1 of the magnitude of v n will be y1 of the magnitude of v and n will be z1 over the magnitude of v okay so now we're going to begin by proving this formula which is the sum of a direction cosine squared and what we'll find is that this will equal to 1. So what we're going to do is, we're going to dot the vector by itself. So v, dotted with v, will be the i components dotted together. So x1 dotted with x1, y1 dotted with y1, and z1 dotted with z1. And when we dot these together, we'll get x1 squared plus y1 squared plus z1 squared. So now we need to think of this expression as the square root of squared. Because what this allows us to do is think of this as the magnitude of a vector. And when it is squared, the square root and the square will cancel. So we can say that the magnitude of the vector squared will equal x1 squared plus y1 squared plus z1 squared. And x1 we can write in terms of L because we can move this modulus of v to the left hand side. So x1 becomes L times the modulus of v all squared. So this is the same as this. We can do the same for y1, so this becomes m multiplied by the modulus of v all squared. We'll do the same with z1. We can move this modulus of v to the left hand side, so this becomes n times the modulus of v all squared. We can multiply out these brackets, so we get the modulus of v squared will be equal to L squared 
mod v squared plus n squared mod v squared plus n squared mod v squared. And now we can factor the mod of v all squared. So the right hand side becomes a modulus of v all squared times l squared plus n squared plus n squared. We can divide both sides by the mod of v squared and this will make 1. So we're left with 1 equals l squared plus m squared plus n squared. And this is exactly what we tried to find. Okay. So now we can use this formula to solve some more problems. And if we're looking at example 2, we told that a vector makes an angle of 120 degrees to the x-axis and 30 degrees to the y-axis. Calculate its possible angles with the z-axis. Okay, so we know cos alpha equals L, cos beta equals M, and cos, al and cos gamma equals N. And alpha is the angle it makes with the x-axis. So cos of 120 will equal L. And cos of 120 is minus 1 half. So L will equal negative 1 half. We know beta is the angle it makes of a y-axis, which is 30 degrees. And cos of 30 is equal to root 3 over 2. So m is root 3 over 2. And cos of gamma we're trying to find. So we know that L squared plus M squared plus N squared will equal 1. We'll substitute in this negative a half. And when we square it, we get a quarter. M squared, well, root 3 over 2 squared becomes 3 over 4 plus n squared equals 1. We can move this 1 to the right hand side. So n squared will equal 0. So therefore, n, which is cos gamma, must equal 0. So if we take the arc cos of both sides, these will cancel. So gamma will equal 90 degrees or 270 degrees, okay? So let's move on to question three. So in question three, we're told that a line passes through the points A and B with position vectors three minus four and two and five, three and negative one. And we've been asked to work out the direction cosines of L, which is this line. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a sketch of this line. Okay, so I've drawn the diagram so now we need to work out our direction vector a to b. And we know that a to b will be o to b minus o to a. And o to b is 5, 3 and minus 1. And o to, and o to a will be 3 minus 4 and 2. So this will give us 2, 7 and minus 3. And this will be our direction vector. So now we know that cos of alpha, which is L, will be the x component 2 over the magnitude of this vector. Well, the magnitude of a vector will be the square root of 2 squared plus 7 squared plus negative 3 squared, or just 3 squared. And this comes out as the square root of 62. So using this, L will be 2 over root 62. The cos of beta, which is n, will be the y component, 7, over the same root 62. And cos of gamma will be negative 3 over root 62. So these are our direction cosines here. And now we can use these three to work out the Cartesian equation of a line. And if you remember from our previous work on vectors, this is the Cartesian equation of a line, where each of these are equal to lambda, and a1, a2, and a3 
come from a position vector and b1, b2, b3 are components of our direction vector. So we can use point A as our position vector. We could have used B, but I'm going to use A. So we've got X minus A1, which is 3, over B1, which is this direction. So 2 over root 62. And this is equal to Y minus negative 4. So plus 4 over B2. So this will be 7 over root 62. This will equal Z minus A3, which is 2 over negative 3 over root 62. Now what we can do is we can multiply each of these by root 62. So our Cartesian equation becomes x minus 3 over 2 equals y plus 4 over 7, which is equal to z minus 2 over negative 3. Okay. Well, thank you very much for watching and I hope you found that useful. You can download the full lesson and worksheet from my website, mrmathematics.com. If you did like the video, if you did find it helpful, please like and subscribe. Okay, thank you for watching and take care.